Keynote 407 was a randomized trial for patients with advanced squamous non-small cell lung cancer. And it took patients and randomized them to either standard chemotherapy with carboplatin and paclitaxel, which has been one of the standards for squamous cell lung cancer for the past 15 years, and compared it to carboplatin plus paclitaxel plus pembrolizumab, which is an immunotherapy um, which we've used in lung cancer now for the past five or six years, but this study was looking at it in combination with chemotherapy in squamous cell, non-small cell lung cancer. This was a randomized uh, placebo-controlled blinded study, and there's approximately 570 patients um, randomized one-to-one -one between carboplatin, paclitaxel, placebo, or carboplatin, paclitaxel, and pembrolizumab. The initial, or sorry, the final analysis uh, has already been done. Sorry, the protocol specified final analysis has already been done with an average of 14 months of follow-up. And that was a, um, and that has showed a significant benefit in terms of overall survival, uh, and in terms of progression-free survival for patients who receive pembrolizumab. The difference being uh, 17 months to around 12 months. In the this analysis, what we did is we, uh, it was updated after roughly 40 months of uh, follow-up. So it was really to describe what happens to patients after that protocol specified following analysis, what are the longer term outcomes look like? In the study, uh, patients, if they pr progressed on placebo, could cross over and receive pembrolizumab. And if you add the patients who received pembrolizumab to those who received immunotherapy off of study, approximately 50% of patients who started on the placebo arm crossed over to receive immunotherapy. The um, if patients completed two years of pembrolizumab, so the plan for the study was two years of pembrolizumab and then stopping. And if you stopped at two years and then you progressed after two years, you could restart the pembrolizumab. So in terms of what was new from the update, so some of the things really haven't changed. So the median overall survival it's 17.2 months in the pembrolizumab arm and 11.6 months in the, in the uh, control arm. But one of the differences is we can now report three-year survival where for patients who received the chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab, almost 30%, 29.7% of patients were alive at three years compared to 18% in the placebo arm. So at three years, the survival um, you know, was still, still fairly robust. Not as good as we'd like, of course, you know, 30% alive means 70% have died by that time, but it's a great, it's a significant improvement over what was there previously. The other important finding uh, that we reported was for patients who had completed that two years of pembrolizumab, and then took a break from treatment. <clears throat> there were 56 patients in total, sorry, who completed the two years of treatment, sorry, 55 patients who completed the two years of treatment. And one year after completion treatment, 96% uh, overall survival. So even with stopping at two years, patients still did quite well after that for the next at least a year and, and longer. So it's important to um, clinicians to know that patients are doing well after they stop the therapy. If you have patients that are getting out to that, that, uh, out to that point, and in terms of initial treatment, it sort of confirms that chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab is a, uh, you know, is a better treatment than chemotherapy in that population um, and should be offered. The toxicities were not different than they were uh, initially. As far as late toxicities go, there was 
one patient who had a, a grade two pneumonitis after completion of all of the treatments, but otherwise there were no uh, observed late toxicities in this trial. One of the clinical implications is it reinforces that chemotherapy plus pembrolizumab is a standard first-line treatment for squamous non-small cell lung cancers. And it sort of reassures us that we haven't seen curves coming together or late effects. The second thing it does clinically is it reminds us that we still need to do better with these patients and um, you know, ongoing clinical trials with various combinations added to the chemotherapy, pembrolizumab or chemotherapy, immunotherapy are important. And the third thing it does in clinic is it reassures us when we're seeing patients who are a year and a half, almost two years out from their beginning of treatment, and we're getting ready to, you know, take them into that off pembrolizumab phase that we can, you know, say with some confidence that, you know, people do in general quite well with a, um, you know, with a, with, a, with a good treatment break there. So it reassures us and reassures patients in clinic that that's a sound strategy. One of the issues that does come up is what about PDL one status? And in this trial, patients were stratified by PDL one status greater than 1% or less than 1%. And the benefits uh, seem to be across PDL one subgroups. There wasn't a lack of benefit in the, in the low group. So I think there's still questions as to what the optimal treatments are. I mean, this is a standard of care. There are competing standards and we need to continue to do better and continue to, you know, compare the different standards that are out there and hopefully get something where we're talking about 50% three-year survival and 70% three-year survival. Mm -hmm.